What's up everyone, John from Beyond AR TV. It's time for another installment of my weekly countdown series seven on Sunday. Because I know it's Sunday, you guys have it tuned in, you know you're paying close attention to your calendar, you know that it's Sunday and you can expect the video from your boy John over at Beyond AR TV every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Before we get started, I'd like to shamelessly and quickly plug my Patreon page. It's the top link in the description down below and it's a great way for you guys to support me when YouTube demonetizes content. It's always just something that helps out in general, but especially during the times when YouTube's like, oh, we see a keyword here that we don't like, so your video's demonetized, especially during the first 48 hours that you upload when everyone tends to watch it, and then you don't make any money on the content that you worked hard on. So, not to really sit here and complain, but it's just, if you're able to, it would be great. It's the top link down below. Starting at just a dollar a month, you can get access to polls, and at five dollars a month, you can get an exclusive playlist every single month that gives musical suggestions to you guys that I don't even talk about on my channel. Channels. So hit it up if you feel so inclined. If not, on with the video. Today on SOS, we're going to be talking about seven albums that leaked way in advance. Stuff that actually probably hurts the band or artist to their core because they work so hard on something and then not just like a week in advance like usual or two or three days. You know, that's the norm these days for an album to find its way online. This is stuff that's like soul crushing because it lands on internet forums, websites, torrent sites months in advance. It's got to be something that's the worst feeling in the world, and today we're going to be talking about seven of the most controversial, biggest, and just horrendous leaks that have ever occurred in music. Since the dawn of the internet age, this has always been a prevalent problem, of course, peer-to-peer -peer sharing, people just passing around links and that sort of thing, and some of these have been very pronounced and have even brought out court cases. So I think this is going to be a really interesting topic. I've actually had this note saved for a while, and I do hope that you guys enjoy this episode of 7 on Sunday. If you do, show support by dropping a like and a comment. So let's get right into it. First up, we have the Canadian electronic pop and experimental music duo Purity Ring. Their album Another Eternity, aka their sophomore album, was intended to be released March 3rd of 2015, but instead it found its way online a month earlier, February 4th. This is something that I saw and couldn't believe because they had pretty much just announced the record, and then already it's finding its way online. This is something that kind of shocked the band, but they didn't really talk about it all that much. Corin Roddick had the most to say, but I think he kind of kept his mumblings to himself for the most part. I think he put out a little tweet around that time, but still, I can't imagine how frustrating that must be, especially for a smaller duo like this. Purity Ring actually managed to bounce back from this leak, charting higher than their debut album Shrines, which came in at number 32, but they had gotten a lot of press and exposure, a lot of positive reviews on Shrines, and actually a lot of people saying that it was one of the best albums of 2012. I would be inclined to agree with that, and I absolutely love their comeback Another Eternity. It charted at number 26 on the Billboard 200 in the United States, six positions higher than their album Shrines. Now what's special about our number six choice today is that this record hasn't even officially come out as of recording this video. It's due out June 1st of this year, 2018, but the record is God's Favorite Customer by Jay Tillman, AKA Father John Misty. Josh Tillman is very popular amongst the indie community. He actually used to play in the band Fleet Foxes, which a lot of you guys probably know, and he's been putting out solo material for a while now, starting with Fear Factory, then I Love You Honey Bear, and then even last year, Pure Comedy, already following that up with a record that he wrote in a hotel room in just two weeks. God's Favorite Customer is once again, of course, coming out on Ballet Union and Sub Pop Records, but this is something that kind of struck me as odd, considering he had put out the lead single, Mr. Tillman, then dropped two more singles, and along with that announcement on April 18th, the record found its way online in full due to an issue with Apple Music. This was accidentally uploaded to Apple Music and obviously instantly people were able to rip it in perfect quality, pristine, and the record doesn't even come out to June 1st. Do I think this is going to affect the record's chart success or sales or streaming whatsoever? Maybe slightly in the streaming department, but I feel like in the indie community especially, fans are very avid and supportive. I do feel like people are going to go out and pick up this record, they're going to support it on vinyl, they're going to buy bundles, they're going to do whatever they need to do to support Father John Misty. And with him having this big of a name at this point, he has a large following, I think this record is still going to be very successful. But only time will tell, as this 
this record leaked online six weeks in advance. This is Sympaternal, must have been what the person that leaked the album was sitting there shouting to himself as he held onto this record as he had access to it and then decided to post it online like a total dick over two months in advance before it was supposed to come out. This record was due for release April 29th, I believe, of 2013, but instead it leaked online February 23rd. The lead single from Simp Eternal by Bring Me the Horizon was called Shadow Moses. That came out in January of 2013, and fans were generally very positive and stoked about the upcoming release. I knew I was, and then, to my shock and kind of dismay as well, I found that the album had leaked so far in advance at the end of February. This sent their new label Epitaph, in the US at least, reeling because they didn't know what to do and they thought this would have a super negative impact on Bring Me The Horizon sales. So instead of releasing at the end of April, they decided to bump that up to April 1st, which wasn't an April Fool's joke. The album was actually a surprising success because after they had built up a lot of touring success and new fans after their album There Is A Hell in 2010, this album debuted at number 11 on the Billboard 200 charts with over 27,000 records sold. This was a big statement to the leakers, basically a middle finger up saying it doesn't matter if our album gets leaked, people are still going to support us. Number 4, Against Me, White Crosses. This was an album that came out in 2010 by the punk rockers and saw them going in a little bit more of an arena-ready sound instead of just their punk rock sound, but they kept their punk roots. This is an album that was originally supposed to be released June 8th of 2010, but instead, according to a lot of people, I actually didn't see this leak, it leaked online in March of 2010. Three months in advance is an insane leak, and it didn't really seem like there was a ton of drama that I could find surrounding this situation. They were signed to Sire and Warner Brothers, I believe at the time, in a joint deal, and surprisingly enough, there didn't seem to be a lawsuit filed or anything like that. It could have been a total accident that the album found its way online. At that time, the band were writing the successor of their album, New Wave, that came out in 2007. That's when I connected with this band initially with some of their early singles, and I think that they really nailed the sound with White Crosses. And with a resounding comeback, they actually kind of spit in the face of the advanced leak and charted higher than they ever had before at the time, with a number 34 position on the Billboard 200 charts. Coming in at number three, we have the eclectic and Icelandic artist Björk with her album Volnikura. I discovered this album after it came out, officially that is, because of the Needle Drops review. I do like Björk from what I've heard from her, but I do admit that I need to get into a lot more material before I can have an actual pronounced opinion on her. This obviously is just talking about the leak though, and her album Volnikura was originally scheduled for release in 2015 in March. This was going to be a late March release, but instead, after she announced the album on January 18th, it leaked online immediately after that, forcing her label to go into panic mode and say, what do we do? So they gave it a digital only release officially two days later on January 20th of that year. This was a huge step for her because a lot of people were seeing at the time that surprise releases could work. Beyonce had done it with her self-titled record. Drake went on to do it with If You're Reading This, It's Too Late. And then obviously Bjork had to kind of pull a surprise release because obviously the good boys and girls out there didn't know about the leak. So she posted it officially January 20th. This is a record Volnikura that did very well for Bjork, and I think that it was a good message to the leakers basically saying, obviously, like so many of these other artists and bands that we've seen on the list today, I can actually still do this. I can put up good numbers, even though you're trying to hurt my career here. Considering I was just talking about Beyonce moments ago, it's only appropriate that I talk about her leak situation that happened in 2011 with her album 4. This is something that obviously was a different time in Beyonce's career because she was already kind of struggling a little bit with her popularity, things were going down in terms of sales, but she had always remained super relevant and still is obviously to this day a huge pop star, a huge star and artist in general. 
This album, Four, was kind of a big representation of her more personal side, and I think that she was trying to branch out a little bit more with her creative freedoms, but was still fighting the label. Now with this leak, it actually leaked online about 20 days in advance. It was originally supposed to come out June 27th of 2011, but instead it leaked online June 7th. Immediately, her label Columbia started really just rearranging their assets because they thought that the album was going to tank commercially. They already saw that her singles hadn't done that well, at least not as well as expected from Four, and they thought this move was going to be disastrous. Lawyers were put in place and they started issuing takedowns left and right, but obviously, as we all know, it spreads like wildfire and you cannot put out that wildfire once it's been started with an internet leak. If you want something gone, the more it seems to pop up. And that was the case once again with 4. Even though a lot of people got in legal trouble with downloading 4 and just people who leaked it in general, I don't know if ever names were released or anything like that or the people responsible for it, it ended up not really affecting that much, but still, it actually put her at number one on the charts still, of course, it's Beyonce, but only selling 310,000, a decline from her most recent effort before that. This is something where I think that she really hit a breaking point, and then she came back and surprise released her self-titled album, probably just to put it out there to say, hey, I was working on something in secret, and I don't want to deal with the leak, so we're just going to drop this shit whenever I feel like it. I had to give the number one spot on my list of albums that leaked so far in advance to the biggest crushing blow, the biggest leak that I could think of. And that award unfortunately goes to the 2015 album by Madonna, a pop icon. The album was called Rebel Heart. This is something that saw leaks starting as early as November 28th, the year before 2014. A couple of the songs and singles leaked online and Madonna was instantly curious and furious and so was her label Interscope. Then a crushing blow came in the middle of December of that same year, just before Christmas, 13 demos were uploaded in full to the internet. This is something that made her extremely mad and I totally understand why, and she quickly had to rush around, get things in order. She wanted to put tracks up on iTunes, but iTunes already had people on holiday for Christmas for that year. And Interscope had to step in, basically force release the tracks, and they slowly trickled out on iTunes. The most impressive thing about this for me was the fact that the original producers for the track were not available, so Madonna actually had to self-produce so quickly six songs, and they turned out not bad at all. I remember listening through and thinking, this is pretty good for a rush release. A month later, the track listing and pre-orders for the album went live, and just days after that announcement, the album, the deluxe edition, leaked online in full, which was devastating to Madonna and her label Interscope, who were like, probably, we cannot catch a damn break here. We need justice. Then the FBI started conducting an investigation, and then Israeli police actually had to step in because it was traced back to an Israeli man we now know as Addie Letterman. This was confirmed that he was actually formerly a contestant on a singing show in Israel, and he was probably, I don't know, jealous or something like that, wanting himself to be successful, but instead actually tapping into and hacking Madonna's computer, releasing her demos and full songs instead. This is something that I see as being absolutely disgusting, pathetic, and I understand that leaks happen and people are going to listen to the leaks. And I don't think that people who listen to leaks are bad whatsoever. I do it myself, obviously. But months in advance is just outrageous. And this is something that needs to be stopped. You can't invade somebody's privacy like that. Hacking computers, I'm glad that he was punished to the fullest extent of the law. Rebel Heart actually went on to be somewhat successful, but still really wasn't all that successful whatsoever. Even though Madonna is kind of fading in terms of her popularity, it was still a big step down in terms of chart success. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of 7 on Sunday. I hope you enjoyed the topic that we covered today. Please drop a like on this video and let me know other videos that you would like to see me do for future episodes on SOS. My Patreon that I plugged earlier is linked in the description down below or else you can tap this little convenient annotation over here in the corner of your screen. If you want to see another episode of SOS, tap right here or another recent video I uploaded on the channel right over here. All of my social media can be found in the description down below. And other than that, I'll see you soon on Beyond AR TV.